بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. خوب الحمد لله يا توفيق to start our third session on كتاب الرجاء from المحجة البيضاء. We are on the page 251, middle of the page. So you remember we gave a definition of رجاء or hope. And then we had some hadith. So far, the main thing we said is that raja is when something needs causes or asbab. Most of it are there. You are concerned about the rest. Then, because most of it are there, you have hope that the rest also inshallah would come like a farmer who has prepared the soil has you know uh, done everything that the farmer should do watering etc sowing the seeds etc but maybe there would be no good rain this season maybe there would be some I don't know uh, disease etc so this farmer can have hope or a student who has gone to the school or to university, take a note, uh, a studying, but is worried maybe the night of exam I become ill, maybe exam would be too difficult. So this student can have hope. But if someone has not done anything and is still says, I have hope, this is not hope. This is, we call this tamanni. This is just you know, wishful thinking, it's not hope. So, now, building upon this understanding of definition and haqiqat or raja, Ghazali says something, and the late Mullah Muhsan Faiz also keeps it, uh, because he keeps things unless they are not needed, or if there is anything that he wouldn't uh, agree, or if he wants to add something. Otherwise, the rest is... The same as what Ghazali said in Ihya Ulum al-Din. So Ghazali says, if there is a servant of God who is uh, careful, who is pious, who is God-fearing, but he is not sure, can I end up with going to heaven? Am I going to have husnul aqiba and, you know, then be resurrected and... Uh, judged by Allah to go to heaven he has hope why? because he has been God fearing, he has been doing wajibat avoiding haram yeah? but has worry about husnul aqiba etc this person can have hope okay so this is one group that can have hope he says al-abdul mujtahid fit the servant who is hard working, mujtahid literally means to do your best. If someone does his best, he's mujtahid. Ijtahad is used for uh, faqih, for jurists, because they do their best in understanding Islamic rulings from the sources. Otherwise, ijtahad literally means to work hard. Da? Like Amir al-Mumni said, a'inuni bi bara'in wa ijtahad wa iffatin wa sadat. Help me with uh, chastity and you know hard working, etc. So, a servant who is mujtahid fitta'ad means works hard with respect to acts of obedience, al mujtanabul al ma'asi, and avoids sinful actions, haqiqun bi an yan tadhira min fadlillah itmam al ni'mah. This person is entitled to hope that Allah would complete ni'mah for him. What is completion of ni'mah? 
وما تمام الجنة تمام النعمة إلا بدخول الجنة completion of نعمة is to go to heaven because if you have everything but you don't go to heaven the rest would be incomplete yeah every blessing would be complete and would be really remaining as a source of joy if it ends to go into heaven otherwise there is no point amal asi but if someone is sinful what about this person a person who is sinful can he have hope if someone is sinful but is doing tawbah is a person that is very sorry and remorseful about his bad actions and ask Allah for forgiveness whenever remembers his or her sins is very much ashamed of them this person also can have hope for she for acceptance of tawbah yeah this is also realistic hope if a sinful person, disobedient person, repents and whatever shortcoming he had, he compensates. If, for example, he missed salat, uh, fasting, I don't know, didn't do hajj, hajj when was wajib, etc. He does whatever could be uh, you know, done as ada or qada, compensation, whatever. If he has harmed the people, he has gone to ask for their, you know, of, you know um, forgiveness. This person also can have hope that his tawbah would be accepted. So, a sinful person who keeps sinning or doesn't bother about damage that has done to himself and others, he shouldn't have hope. Yeah? Because he is not really you know, remorseful and repentant. Also, if there is a person that is sinful but not yet reached to the point of doing all the qadha, all the compensations and fixing problems but is preparing for a sincere toba. okay so is starting to worry starting to cry over the scenes and thinks that I have to change my life etc this person can have also hope hope for what can you guess The second person has hope for acceptance of Tawbah. Yeah? The first person has hope of acceptance of Ta'at and going to heaven. The second has hope of acceptance of Tawbah because he's Ta'if, he's repentant. The third person can have hope of Tawfiq le Tawbah. Can have hope that he would get Tawfiq to do Tawbah. Because doing Tawbah is not something you know, that you can take it for granted. Not everyone, even people who are sometimes sorry, but this is not enough to repent. Repentance is in need of uh, you know, determination and you know, increasing your marifa, in your love for Allah, so that you stop all the bad things. Okay? So this person also can have hope, but the hope should be corresponding to the condition of the person. So he has hope for Tawfiq let tawbah to be successful to do tawbah. Okay. لأن كراهته للمعصية because he has dislike for ma'asiyah. This is very good thing. He can hope that this dislike for ma'asiyah can lead to tawbah. وَإِنَّمَا الرَّجَاءِ بَعْدَ تَأَكُّدِ الْأَسْبَابِ So in general, hope is after some part of the complete cause is there and you are worried about the remaining. Without having any cause, any part of the cause, you cannot have raja. 
there is ayah that uh, you are all familiar with surah baqarah verse 218 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim inna alladhina amanu walladhina hajaru wajahadu fi sabilillah truly those who have faith and have done hijrah migrated for the sake of allah and struggled for the sake of Allah, these people have hope for mercy of Allah. What does it mean? It means that these are the people who have rights for being hopeful. Yeah? If someone has no iman or no jihad or no hijrah, has not done nothing for Allah and has hope, this hope is not real. Okay? Ulaika yarjuna rahmatullah. These are the people who have hope, means these are the people who have really hope, not just wishful thinking. Okay? Yes. Surah Baqarah, verse 218. You're welcome. Then he says something from Yahya ibn Ma'az. Yahya ibn Ma'az, who was, you know, a spiritual figure, he says, in my opinion, من أعظم الإغترار عندي. In my opinion, he says, one of the greatest self-deceits is this. التمادي في الذنوب مع رجاء الأف من غير ندامة. Is to continue sinning and not having reg re you know, regret or remorse, and then you say, I will be forgiven. This is one of the greatest, greatest horror, self deceit. Or Allah, you say, I hope I will be very close to God without having any act of obedience. Without Obeying Allah, how can you get close to Him? Or entezar o zar al jannah be bazar nar. You know, whatever seed you sow, then you can expect to harvest something. You know, from that type. Yeah, if you put wheat or barley, whatever. Yeah, then you can expect harvesting. From the same type. If you put the seed of Jannah, which is ta'a, acts of obedience, then you can harvest in heaven. If you put the seed of hell, then you cannot expect to go to Jannah. Okay? This is self deceit. So, now. We go back to Ghazali. This was a quotation. Ghazali says, as you remember, we said, Raja is something that is preceded by some knowledge, followed by some actions, and itself is a condition. You remember? We said, is a hal. Before this hal, this condition, there is some elm, and it is leading to some amal, some action. Okay? So now, إِنَّهَا حَالَةٌ أَثْمَرَهَا الْعِلْمِ بِجَرَيَانِ أَكْثَرِ الْأَسْبَابِ When you know that most of the causes needed are there, this knowledge of knowing that most of the requirements, most of the prerequisites are there, leads to hope. Then hope leads to action. Someone who has hope works. If someone has hope and doesn't do anything, this is not hope. Okay? So if I have hope, then I will work harder. Because I say, Alhamdulillah, I have got very close. I need to make sure that I finish the job. If I am climbing mountain and then I have hope I will continue not that when I have hope I just sit okay so it should lead to action (laughs) 
هذه الحاله تثمر الجهد للقيام ببقيه الاسباب على حسب الامكان so this condition of hope leads to working hard to bring whatever you can you cannot bring everything there are many things that are not in your hand yeah you need allah's help but do whatever is in your hand you've done 70% 80% do 100% of what you can do and then you can have hope that allah helps you with the rest again he mentions the example of a farmer and then he says raja yuzaduhul yas what is opposite to hope despair yas yamna min at-ta'ahud yas despair stops you to look after your farm if you are a farmer who is despaired would say no matter whether i look after my farm or not it's not going to produce anything this year we are cursed we cannot harvest anything then he would not do anything so despair is opposite to hope and it's very destructive therefore one of the ways that shaitan can defeat us is to make us feel despair because if we are despair we are not going to do anything that's the best thing for shaitan if we don't do anything man arafa anna al ard sabaha wa anna al ma maghur wa anna al badr la yanbut fa yatruk la mahala tafaqqud al ard if someone says that the soil is bad the seed was bad the rain is not there the sun is not going to shine so this person is hopeless would not do anything and definitely he's not going to have any harvest then he says khauf is not opposite to hope despair is opposite to hope because khauf or fear is something that can be compatible with hope actually we need both of them so if someone says khauf is opposite to hope what do you say fear and hope you say no they are different but they're not opposite they actually are friends yeah they are good friends they're companions we need both of them there are two wings that we need to fly okay but despair and hope they are enemies but khauf and raja they are friends yeah الخوف ليس بضد الرجاء بل هو رفيق له it's friend we will explain when we talk about خوف so خوف also is very good because خوف also makes you motivated to work yeah if you don't have any worry about exam you are not going to work and if you have no hope also you are not going to work so you need a combination of hope and fear yeah or for example if you are a teacher or a speaker if you have no fear and say you know i can you know handle you know such cases easily then you don't prepare yourself yeah you don't study you don't you know prepare what you want to say you go and just start talking and then sometimes you can make funny mistakes or you may forget things or you are not going to make good use of the time you say you had whatever comes to your mind so it's good that even if you are very experienced teacher or a speaker to have some fear so that you take your job seriously yeah or even a doctor who goes for example to surgery if has no fear is not good but if is also despaired or too fearful is not good should be with balance hope and fear
Then he says, one of the uh, outcomes of, you know, hope is that makes you move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like a person, for example, has hope of meeting the king and, you know, being pleasing to the king and, you know, maybe get some gifts from the king or have company of the king. The hope would push him to go to the king with joy and with pleasure. Yeah. But if he has no hope, would not go there. Or if he has only fear and no hope also would not go there. The combination of fear and hope are needed. And then the result is action, as we said. There is a beautiful hadith. A person called Zayd and Nakhil, so, sorry, Zayd al Khail. He said to the Prophet Zayd al Khail, he said, I have come to ask you about sign. Maybe you sometimes have this question if I want to have a sign from God. That, for example, what God wants from me, you know, what, when he is pleased, something like this. When God, you know, is not happy, this God is not pleased. So he said to the Prophet, جِئْتُ لَأَسْأَلَكَ أَنْ عَلَامَةِ اللَّهِ فِي مَنْ يُرِيدْ وَعَلَامَتُهُ فِي مَنْ لَا يُرِيدْ What is the sign when Allah wants something or doesn't want something? What is the sign? Is there any sign for that? According to this hadith, Rasulullah asked him, كَيْفَ أَسْبَحْتَ? How did you start your day or how are you today? You know, something like that. He said, أَسْبَحْتُ. Look at his description of his condition. So Prophet, based on his condition, is giving him answer. What is your, you know, situation today? How do you feel today? He said, أَسْبَحْتُ أُحِبُّ الْخَيْرِ I have this feeling that I love goodness and people who do good things. I love righteous people. I love, you know, charitable people, good people. I love them. And if I also have opportunity to do something good, I quickly go towards it. Because sometimes, you know, someone says, I love, you know, good people, but doesn't do anything. But he says, I love good people, I love good things, and if I have opportunity, sara'atu, I rush towards it. Okay? And I am sure that Allah rewards doing good things. I have no doubt about reward. And if I miss some good things, I miss the opportunity of doing something good. Hazantu alai. I become sad. Wahanantu alai. I would be eager to do that in the first opportunity. So, hearing this, Rasulullah said, Hadhi alamatullah fi man yurid. This is the sign of Allah with respect to the people that Allah loves. So if you love good things and good people who do good things and are eager to do good things and rush to do when there is opportunity and feel sad when there is no opportunity, you are one of the people that Allah loves. Okay? So, as you see, if Allah wants goodness for someone, then that person would have hope for doing good things and reaching good position. Then there is a discussion about merits of hope. If you remember at the beginning, we said we will talk about haqiqatul raja. Then we talk about fazilatul raja. What are the merits of hope? So far, we just discussed Haqiqatul Raja. I hope 
by now it's very clear what is the reality of Raja. What do we mean by hope? Now, what are the merits of Raja? And encouraging at targhib fi for being hopeful. He says, when you act out of hope, this is higher than acting out of fear. You have to act, there is no doubt. And without hope or fear, you don't act. This is also beyond doubt. But now question, is it better if my first motive is hope or my first motive is fear? Which one is more powerful? If you do things out of hope or out of fear? He says it's better to do it out of hope. Why? Because hope brings love, joy, pleasure. When you do something out of love and seeking pleasure, you do it better. Imagine if you work somewhere that you love, okay? For example, you have your own business and you work in your own you know, shop, for example. And you have hope of making progress. Or you work in an office and you are afraid that if you, I don't work, you know, they fire me. The way you work out of hope or out of fear is different. The quality is different. Yeah, or sometimes I say, uh, of course, this is not to be generalized, but for some women, if, for example, if their parents come or their in-laws come, the joy that they have in cooking and cleaning, you know, <laughs> is not the same. Not, of course, everyone, some are the same, you know, but some people, you know, it's different. Because worried, you know, if I don't, you know, kill him properly, my mother-in-law, you know, goes and opens maybe something and finds something and mentions, you know, you are not a good, you know, wife or my son. So, out of fear. But if it is out of hope, it's different. Uh, of course, I don't generalize, just. So, it's better if we do things out of hope and hope. Hob, <laughs> which is love. Yeah? Hob and hope. There is also need for having our hope in Allah above our fear from other things. This is also very important. Have hope in Allah above fear from other things. There is a hadith that Allah said to Ya'qub, Allah Nabiyyina wa Ali wa alayhi salam, Atadri lemma farraq to bayna kava bayna Yusuf? According to this hadith, do you know why I separated Yusuf from you? Although brothers of Yusuf were guilty and responsible, but from a Tawhidi perspective, everything is an action of God. If God wanted, could have stopped them. Okay? So, according to this hadith, Allah said to Yaqub, do you know why I separated you from Yusuf? The reason is this. You said, and you know, this part is from Quran. When brothers of Yusuf went to the father and said, you know, give us permission to take Yusuf and, you know, we go and, you know, play, etc. What did Yus uh, Yaqub say? He said, I have fear that wolf may eat Yusuf while you are ghafil, you are heedless. He didn't say, I am worried that you will going to kill him. Yeah? He was very diplomatic. He said, I am worried that you may not give him enough care. While you are playing, wolf might come and attack Yusuf. 
لما خفت ذئب ولم ترجوني Why you feared the wolf and didn't have hope in me? You should have first put your hope in me. You put first fear from wolf. And second, maybe you had hope. Do you understand? لمن نظرت إلى غفلة إخوته ولم تنظر إلى حفظي له Why? You thought about heedlessness of his brothers but you didn't think about my protection. He didn't do anything haram but this is not expected from a wali of awliyaullah because you know hasanatul abrar sayyatul muqarrabin those who are at high level they have to be very careful about whatever they say they think even if it is halal if this hadith is correct then it means that why you didn't think positively about me and you thought about the problems yeah actually maybe by saying that i have fear that a wolf might eat you so you put in the mind of the brothers to do something and then come and say wolf ate yusuf <laughs> yeah because the plan was that they say you know we were playing and wolf attacked and uh, this is the dress which is you know uh, covered with blood of yusuf which was fake so he should have had hope in allah above fear from wolf and hope in Allah's protection above heedlessness of his sons okay maybe for me and you it's okay but someone like Ya'qub should not be like that okay there is also hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لا يموتن أحدكم إلا وهو يحسن الظن بالله. Now we have few hadith about having good opinion about Allah. Rasulullah said, none of you should die unless is having good opinion about Allah. So make sure before you die, you achieve this quality that you have good opinion because Allah is going to treat us. The way we think about him. So if you have good opinion about him, then you will be treated in you know proportionate way. There is another hadith which is again attributed to Rasulullah. Yaqulullah Azza wa Jal Ana inda Zanna Abdi Bih. I am very close to what you think about me. So whatever you want you can think about me. Means be careful. Think a good way about me. Yeah? If you say Allah loves me, Allah helps me, I am going to do Tawbah and He's going to accept. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to make progress. Then inshallah these things happen. If you say Allah doesn't care about me, doesn't love me, you know, doesn't pay attention to me, He may not forgive me, you know. If you think negatively, this may happen to you. Of course, uh, this has also very important uh, explanation that inshallah maybe in future I explain more. In Islamic theory of education course I have explained this, but inshallah maybe later I explain that it's not by chance that some people have good opinion, some people have bad opinion about Allah. It very much depends on your own character and your also ideas. The person that is very kind and merciful would never think negatively about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who say Allah is not going to forgive me, normally they are people that themselves are not forgiving people. Okay? Inshallah we will talk about it.
once Rasulullah went to someone visiting him and he was very close to death. When Nazar, Nazar means his soul was being taken. So he was very close to death, you know, like we say, Ihtazar. Rasulullah asked him, Kayfa tajuduka? How do you find yourself? He said, I have fear of my sins and hope in mercy of Allah. Akhafu dhunubi wa arju rahmata rabbi. So he has fear and hope together. Rasulullah, according to his hadith, said, Majtama'a fi qalb abdin fi hadha al-mawtin illa a'tahu allahu ma raja wa amanahu mimma yakhaf. In this world, hope and fear would not come together in someone's heart unless Allah gives him what he hopes and protects him what he fears. Okay? He had hope about punishment for, for the sins. Allah will protect, will not punish. He had hope in maghfara and rahmah of Allah. Allah will give that. Amir al salam said to someone who was very despaired because he had done lots of sins, he was very despaired. Amir al according to this hadith, said, Ya hadha, ya'asuka min rahmatillah a'azamu min dhunubik. Your despair from mercy of God is worse than your sins. No matter how many sins you have committed, if you have yas, you know, one of the greatest major sins is al yasu an rawhillah. If you have despair, this is worse than your sins. There is a hadith that he says it is a reliable hadith, sahih, authentic. إِنَّ الرَّجُلًا كَانَ يُدَايَنُ النَّاسِ فَيُسَامِحُ الْغَنِي وَيَتَجَاوَزُ عَنِ الْمُؤْسِرِ There was a person who was lending money to people and was very lenient, very flexible. If someone had money, it was delaying, it was okay. If someone was mu'sir, didn't have money, was, you know, forgiving. So he was de dealing people with kindness and, you know, lenience. So, laqiya Allah, he died and met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walam ya'mal khayran qattu. And he had not done anything good. You know, he was not a person of doing salat or, you know, uh, wajibat or other things. But he was very kind to people, you know. فَقَالَ Allah Azza wa Jal He met Allah and Allah told him, مَنْ أَحَقُّ بِذَلِكَ مِنَّا Allah said, who among both of us, who is more, ex you know, expected to be forgiving? You were forgiving people when you were, you know, giving them money and they didn't have money, you were forgiving. So now, I will be forgiving you. Okay? So, Allah is never, you know, remaining in debt to anyone. فَعَفَا أَنْهُ بِحُسْنَ ذَنَّهِ وَالرَّجَاهِ so, because this person was nice to people and had hope that Allah is going also to be nice to me, Allah treated him like this. We don't want to give, you know, uh, kind of protection to people not to do their wajibat, but we want to say that you have to make sure that you have good opinion 
and also be forgiving and merciful but of course no one should take it as a sanction to do bad things there is also something from Sunni sources that uh, Ghazali quotes uh, we may not have this in Shia sources, but he quotes from Sunni sources. He says that Rasulullah said to people, "Lo ta'lamuna ma a'lam, la zahiktum qalilan wa la bakaytum kathiran." If you knew what I know, you would have cried a lot and would have smiled very little. Meaning, if you knew what is the situation on the day of judgment and you know the uh, difficult you know situation that we will be going through you would be not cry uh, not uh, laughing and you would be crying a lot then jibrail came down to the prophet habata jibrail faqala in rabbaka azza wa jal yaqul lima tuqannitu ibadi Jibrail said, Allah says, why you are making my servants lose hope? فَخَرَجَ فَرِحًا Then Rasulullah went out and he was very happy and said to people that, you know, receive this Bashara that Allah has, you know, said this. So if this hadith is correct, means that Allah is more merciful than even what Rasulullah, you know, could think because the Sunnah was warning people, but Allah says, Don't worry them too much. There is hadith that Allah said to Dawood, Allah Nabi Nawa Ali Wali Salam, Ahibbani, wa Ahibba man yuhibbuni, wa Habibni ala khalqi. Dawood, do three things love me, and love those who love me, and make people love me. Okay, love me and love those who love me and make people love me. He said, how can I make people love you? He didn't ask about the first two because it seems that he already was loving Allah and loving those who love him. Yeah, so he said, how can I make people love you? Allah said, Udhkurni bil hasan al jameel. وَذْكُرْ آلَائِي وَإِحْسَانِي وَذَكِّرْهُمْ ذَلِكْ Mention my blessings, my bounties, my favors upon them. If people know how much I love them, how much I have you know, provided them, they would love me. To love Allah is very, very natural. Just the thing is that we don't know Him. Or we forget. If someone has done one in million of what Allah has done for you, you will never forget. Imagine if someone paid for all your you know, uh, education at the primary, secondary, high school, will you ever forget? If on top of that has paid for your university, on top of that has paid for your maintenance, on top of that has provided you with accommodation, on top of that has provided you with nice parents, <laughs> yeah. we cannot even list how much he has blessed us. But we, because we take these things for granted, unfortunately, then we find it sometimes difficult to love Allah because we just f focus on negative things and what we are lacking, what we are, you know, suffering from. We forget that we are embraced with His love and mercy. There is a Hadith that in Rajulan Yatkulunar Fayam Kosofiha Al Fasan. A person went to hell or is going to go to hell. Sometime when something is happening in future and we are sure it can be said in past tense. So 
This person, after being in hell for 1,000 years, because you know that if someone goes to heaven, will never come out. But if someone goes to hell, they may, some of them uh, will come out. So this person was in hell for 1,000 years. And then he started saying, Ya Hanan, Ya Manan. Maybe, you know, uh, the ice was defrozen <laughs> after 1,000 years. Now his heart is <laughs> functioning. Ya Hanan, O Ya Manan. Then Allah says to Jibra'il, Izhab, fa'atani ba'abdi. Go and bring my servant. قَالَ فَيَجِيءُ بِهِ فَيُوْقِعُهُ عَلَىٰ رَبِّهِ Jibra'il brings him and puts him before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, كَيْفَ وَجَدْتَ مَكَانَكَ How did you find that place? He says, شَرُّ مَكَانَ The worst place, was a very bad place. Then Allah says, according to this hadith, okay, now turn him back, take him back to that place. Then he moves and turns back. Then Allah says, why did you turn back? To he says, I had hoped that you would not send me back again when you bring me out. Then Allah says, take him to heaven. You remember the first night we had something similar from Shia sources, but it was not exactly like this. That was uh, maybe uh, more kind of uh, systematic. But anyway, similar that Allah wanted to test him. When he said, I had hope that you would not send him back, then he said, take him to heaven. These were hadith from Sunni sources that Ghazali quotes. Now, Mullah Mohsen adds some Shia hadith. Okay, so maybe I say one Shia hadith and then inshallah we will continue next week. Min tariq al khasa aqulu. Aqulu now is Mullah Mohsen. He says from Shia uh, narrations. The first is ma rawahu fil kafi an abi ja'far alayhi salam In kafi Sheikh Kulaini has quoted this hadith through his chain of narrators from Imam Baqir alayhi salam Qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi Imam Baqir said that Rasulullah said قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى رسول الله said Allah said so this is hadith Qudsi لَا يَتَّكِلُّ الْعَامِلُونَ عَلَىٰ أَعْمَالِهِمُ الَّتِي يَعْمَلُونَهَا لِلثَّوَابِ فَلَا يَتَّكِلُّ الْعَامِلُونَ Those who are acting they should not rely on the actions that they do for my reward Okay, so you know I have done these things for you know and calculated. I have enough reward, you know. Like for example, someone wants to travel, says you know I have this much money, it's enough. So I say I have this many years of prayer, this many years of fasting, and uh, I calculate. I say reward is enough. This says no, you shouldn't rely on the actions that you have done for the sake of my reward. فَإِنَّهُمْ لَوِجْتَهَدُوا وَأَتْعَبُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ أَعْمَارَهُمْ فِي عِبَادَتِي كَانُوا مُقَسِّرِينَ Because even if they work hard all their life, they would be still not doing enough. Still, they are shortcoming. غَيْرَ بَالِغِينَ فِي عِبَادَتِهِمْ كُنْهَ عِبَادَتِي they would not reach with the abad that they have, with the worship that they have, what they expect. They expect karamati, 
They expect I honor them. Wanaim fi jannati wa rafi adarajat al ula fi jawari. If they want, I honor them. Take them to heaven and put them in high positions near myself. They should not rely on the reward of their actions. Okay. So, what should be our hope? And what should we trust? Walakin birahmati falyasiku. But they should trust my mercy. Wafadli faryarju. They should have hope in my fadl, in my favor. Wa'ila husne zannebi falyatma innu. Their peace of heart and mind should be in having good opinion about me. فَإِنَّ رَحْمَتِي إِنَّ ذَلِكَ تُدْرِكُهُمْ Then my mercy will reach them. Even if you are not able to find mercy of Allah, mercy of Allah comes and finds you. Yeah, in Taqibat al-Salat you say, إِلَّمْ أَكُنْ أَهْلًا أَنْ أَبْلُغَ رَحْمَتَكْ فَرَحْمَتُكَ أَهْلٌ أَنْ تَبْلُغَنِي وَتَسَعَنِي If I cannot reach your rahma, your rahma can come and rescue me. Okay? وَمَنِّي يَبْلُغُهُمْ My man, my great favor will reach them. Or يَبْلُغُهُمْ رَزْوَانِي My great favor would take them to my pleasure. وَمَغْفَرَتِي تَلْبَسُهُمْ أَفْوِي And my forgiveness will give them pardon. فَإِنَّنِي أَنَا اللَّهُ الرَّحْمَانُ الرَّحِيمُ وَبِذَالِكَ تَسَمَّيْتُ I am Allah who is Rahman, who is Rahim, and I have taken this as my name. In discussion about God's mercy, some of you maybe have uh, listened to the lectures or read about God's mercy. I said that in the whole Quran, as you know, there is one surah which doesn't start with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Okay? And normally ulama say, what is the reason? Why that chapter, chapter 9, Tawbah, is not? They say because this chapter starts with warning. Warning pagans that after, you know, so much of, you know, mischief, you know, killing people, torturing people, etc. Allah is warning them. And warning doesn't match with saying in the name of Allah, who is Rahman, who is Rahim, I warn you. Because then no one would take you seriously. <laughs> yeah? If you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I warn you, they wouldn't take you seriously. So they say, it doesn't match the context. But then, my question is, okay, it doesn't match the context to say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, but why we don't say, Bismillah al-Qasim al-Jabbarin. Bismillah al-Mudrik al-Zalimin. Bismillah al-Khayr al-Muntaqimin. Why we don't start with something that shows anger and, you know, uh, revenge. Or just say Bismillah. So, my humble understanding is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed telling us something very important. He says, either I start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim or I don't say anything else. Because I don't want you to have different images of me. The only th standard and acceptable understanding of me is what? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If it's not possible to say it, so it's better not to say anything. Yeah? It's like, for example, if I have always been kind to my children, if one day I am very frustrated from work and I cannot be kind, I know if I go, I'm going to be, you know, angry. So it's better I don't go that day home. <laughs> okay? Because always I have been very kind to them. That day I'm going to be, you know, angry and fighting and shouting. So it's better if that day I don't, you know, show myself so that they have always that 
kind image of me. So Allah wants us always to think of him as Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Okay? And here says, Inni ana Allahu Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim wa bidhalika tasammaytu. I have taken this as my name. Inshallah, we continue uh, with more hadith and then we continue the discussion about remedy and medicine uh, for someone who has no hope. So what we understand from these hadith is that in addition to our actions, what is very important is to invest on your way of thinking on your attitude, especially here in about your attitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? It makes huge difference whether you think of him in a good way or bad way. If you have good opinion or bad opinion. If you do things with hope or without hope. If you rely on your action or you rely on his mercy. These are things that may not affect your behavior. Yeah. Anyway, you are going to do maybe similar things. But this is in your mind and heart. Yeah. This is like uh, a computer may have, you know, different applications, different softwares. But what is in the executive system is very important. Executive system is like your identity. Part of our identity is made by our aqidah. Aqidah is very much part of us. Aqidah is very fundamental. What is your belief about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you just list uh, doctrines of theology, that's not enough. In your heart, what do you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much you are sure about his love, about his mercy, about his kindness, how much you have hope in him. This makes huge difference in your action in dunya and in what you are going to see in the hereafter. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our ma'rifa and love for him and his awliya and give us always balance of hope and fear. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Any question, comment? Yes. You know, sometimes I think that my good actions are going to save me. This is arrogance. Because what have I done that I think would be saving me? If I have done anything first, who said that they are accepted? Because Allah only accepts from muttaqeen. Yeah? Am I muttaqi? Even Ibrahim is worried. He says, Taqabbal minna. Yeah? So I'm not sure my actions are accepted. And even if they are accepted, how much I have done? When Amir al Mumin says, Ah min qillat al zat. Yeah? So uh, we say in Dua Abu Hamza also, uh, Lastu attakilu fi nijat min azabika a'amalana, bal bi fazlika alayna. Yeah, in Dua Abu Hamza we say, We don't rely on our action, we rely on your fazl. Because I know that I have not done anything significant. Uh, maybe I told you this story, you know, in some lectures, you know, that uh, the late Allama Ja'fari, Allama Ja'f, Muhammad Taqi Ja'fari, was a great scholar, died a few years ago. He has um, commentary on Nahjul Balagh, more than 20 volumes. So he says there was a person 
who told him this uh, story. He said, Alhamdulillah, I had tawfiq to make some, um, you know, masks, you know, some, you know, charity, you know, projects. And then I went to Mashhad. This is before revolution. Before revolution, uh, men and women were not separated. So they, like Kaaba, which are not separated. So they were going around together. So he said, I went to Mashhad and I said, oh, Imam Reza, please show me my position. Because I have done, alhamdulillah, some good work, you know, masjid, etc., you know. So he wanted to see how high is his position. So he said, when I was, you know, there, I saw a lady looked to be my aunt. So I started, you know, talking to her like my aunt. And she said, I don't know you. So I thought... She's my aunt, but maybe I made mistake. Then after another round, I saw her again. I said, aunt, you know, why you say you are not my aunt? She said, I am not your aunt. Anyway, he repeated this. Then that lady said, are you donkey? I told you I am not your aunt. <laughs> then he said, oh, well, now I realize Imam Reza is telling me what is my position. I am very a stupid person. <laughs> that think I must have high position because I have made some masjid. Yeah? So it's not up to us to judge. If Allah accepts, then even if you have you know, given one brick to masjid, may take you high. If Allah doesn't have given 100 masjid, may not. You know. So you cannot trust your action. Uh, those who are good people never look at their own action and admire themselves. MashaAllah, what I have done, you know. If we think like this, this is a sign that it's not going to be accepted. And you know the story of Allah Tabatabai. So this is very well known uh, a story that uh, Actually, I was uh, listening again yesterday. Uh, one of the uh, students of Allame said that I went to Allame and he was crying, and you know, because he had also some illness, he was also, you know, shaken. So he said, I asked him what has happened. He said, My brother has sent me a letter because he, he and his brother from childhood studied together. They were orphans, they studied together, they went to Najaf together, they were very, very close. And his brother was very great alim also. Most of time after Najaf, he was in Tabriz. So he said, I received a letter from my brother and he said, our father is not happy with you. Father died when they were young children. But his brother had contact with the souls of the dead people. Even he had contact with the soul of his teacher, Ayatollah Qazi. So he said, our father was not happy with you because you didn't make him share reward of writing Al-Mizan. And he said, I said, why you are crying? Why you know, uh, didn't you know, do this? He said, because I never thought about reward. I didn't think Al-Mizan has reward. So he has written the best tafsir of Quran, spent you know, tens of years, but he didn't think that it has reward. But if I give one lecture, then I, I say, you know, oh Allah, my, where is my reward? So those who are very uh, high, they never look at their actions with admiration. Those who are low or mean, if done the little thing, they say, you know, I have done this. Yes. Believe that you know, um, Allah will listen to every du'a. 
is that still the, the same thing where we use our, uh, we have hope in our actions because we believe that every action will have an effect somewhere, even if it's not here, if it's in, in Asra even. But yeah, ev 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 yeah. Well. every action has uh, impact, but we shouldn't think that uh, our actions have great positive impact. We say that we, n we need to work, even if you can do one extra little thing, you should do it. Even if you can say one more time salawat, one more time la ilaha illallah, you should do it. Because sometimes people, when he they hear this, they reduce their action. This is not the solution. You should be very active, but don't think that your actions are going to help you. Yes, they are going to qualify you. You know, sometimes I think my actions can save me. Sometimes I think my actions show to Allah that I am obedient, listening, and please help me. So this is very important that we do even one little extra thing, we should do it. But we hope that Allah looks at us and says, this servant of mine is trying his or her best. Yeah? And then he comes and helps us. His help is what we need. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so this is actually what we find in our du'as. That when I look at my actions, I become hopeless. When I look at you, I become hopeful. Yeah. So, uh, mystics uh, use the example of peacock. Peacock has very beautiful feathers. Yeah. But they say the feet are very ugly. So whenever peacock looks high and you know opens the feathers becomes very hopeful when looks at the feet becomes very humble <laughs> so they say we should be like this not only look at your feet <laughs> and not only look at your beautiful feathers keep the balance when you see you are going to lose hope look at the beautiful side when it's going to become arrogant look at the you know, ugly side. What is important is that as soon as you see you are becoming passive and you say, you know, I don't want to, you know, work anymore, this is a problem. Because both fear and hope should make you more active. Yeah? A student who has hope and also fear studies harder. A businessman who has hope and fear works harder. Yeah? A doctor who has hope and fear looks at the patient and takes care of the patient. But if you say, no, I am hopeless, it's not going to, this is then sign of going to wrong direction. And you know, we should reach the point that we do good things not for the sake of reward or fear from punishment, yeah? So for example, you know, sometimes I say this, suppose Allah says that tomorrow, Tuesday, 7th of November, okay, 2023, I am not going to reward you for your good actions or punish you for bad actions. Whether you pray or not is the same. Just one day we want to be like this. Whether you, you know, are kind or not, it's going to be the same. What are we going to do? If we are going to change, it means that we are still not mature. Yeah? If we are going to remain careful and pious, this means that we have internalized these things. Yeah? We should reach the point that even if Allah says, I am going to send you to heaven. Then we should say, okay, but I'm going to continue and I'm going to work hard. Even if you grant, you know, guarantee, 
I'm not going to stop. I help people, I educate, I teach, I don't know, I do Salih Rahim, even if I know I'm going to heaven. But people who are not going to heaven are people that when you tell them you know, go to heaven, they stop doing good things. So it means th their nature is not heavenly. Yeah? So we should reach the point that it wouldn't affect us whether there is questioning or not. Whether there is punishment or not, it shouldn't affect us.